Hi, everybody, and welcome back to the Joan Manis podcast. Um, let, my let, first one was a little bit all over the place, didn't really have much structure. This time, I'm going to segregate it into three different segments. Uh, the first segment is the one we're going to get into right now. Joel Manis updates. Updates, get your updates. In the Joel Manis updates segment, um, what we're going to do is we're going to talk about what's going on with me and uh, what's going on with the channel and what you guys can expect coming down the pipeline. Well, first things first, uh, I'm a goddad. Uh, my cousin just had his first kid, and he named me the godfather, and that's super awesome in the world of Joel Manis. I love it. It's huge, huge news. It's awesome for me. Um, second thing is, if you guys watch my newest uh, What's in the Box video, uh, link in the description below. I'll try to put an annotation there. And... Uh, if you guys look at that, you'll see I got a whole shit ton of new Common Rider build stuff. Uh, I finally got some uh, Loop Ranger versus Powder Ranger stuff. Um, I'm going to do some reviews coming as soon as I can pump them out. Um, <clears throat> so that's something to look forward to. And uh, that's about it for me. You know, just work, 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 work. And on to the second segment, the part where uh, we talk about the main subject of today's podcast. And today's podcast is going to be about Marvel movies. In honor of the uh, new Avengers Infinity War, I got a friend of mine, Paul, he's going to be on. Um, not quite sure how to do like video-to-video -video record, so you're going to hear his voice. Sorry if the quality is not that great. But now on to the second segment, which I call The Meat. So tasty. Hey, everybody. So now it's the segment I've dedicated to the main topic we're going to talk about today. And with me today is my buddy, Paul. Hi, Paul. Hello. Uh, we're going to be talking about uh, Marvel movies and whatnot leading up to Infinity Wars. Um, if we do get into spoiler territory, before we get into it, we'll put a big old spoiler warning across the screen so you guys know to go away if you haven't seen the movie. Anyways, let's start things off. So the first thing we're going to talk about is Iron Man, because that's where it all started. Like, yeah, 10 years, man. It's crazy. It's crazy to think about. Yeah, and... I, I think, um, personally, like, Robert Downey Jr. was the perfect casting for that role. Oh, definitely. <sighs> like, he really yeah. embodies how snarky, like, Stark is, and, like, how he, he, he pretty much is just like, fuck you, I have money. <laughs> yeah, but, and, and he's like, you know, kind of with Professor X, where he, had, he, he has to look perfectly, too. Like, you look at him, and you can automatically see, like, oh, he'd be perfect to that character who he was. Yeah. Well, before they even cast him, like, people were talking about, like, he would be perfect. Yeah. And the funny thing is, like, before they actually made that Iron Man movie, they had, they'd been talking about doing Iron Man for quite a while. They wanted to do one back in the 90s. And they were going to have Tom Cruise as Tony Stark. Oh, God, no. Please, yeah, no. Yeah, we're all grateful. <laughs> we're all grateful things worked out the way they did. Although, you know, he, he is a master of Scientology. I guess it works. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, um, one thing that I always thought was kind of weird is how, like, even though Marvel had the rights, they didn't or still don't technically have the rights to, like, Hulk movies. Yeah, Universal holds the distribution rights, which is why we haven't seen another, like, solo Hulk film. Universal has no, and the, the, what pisses me off is that Universal has no interest in, you know, having anything to do with any future Hulk movies. Fans like us, we would love one. I mean, personally, I want to see a movie where they introduce Steve Hulk. They actually pick up the thread from the Incredible Hulk with the leader, right? Everything because they did set up his origin in that movie. They, there's a cam. There's um, Doc Samson actually does like kind of cameo in the movie. It's played by uh, a his film on Potter Family. Oh wow! <laughs> yeah, that's kind of cool. Um, and there's so many other things, and like, it's nice that they brought General Ross back, but like they. Seems to have forgotten all about Betty, and now they have Banner with in a romance with Black Widow. Yeah, that what? that that is. I find that a little just forced and cringy. I, I I'm not gonna lie, I I totally agree with that. Um, I I do like how they like had a slow build too, you know, because then like Cap and then Thor. Yeah, and you can also see like. With each movie, they learn, okay, this stuff works, this stuff doesn't. We should try to try and, you know, do better on this kind of aspect of these movies. And you can definitely see that progression of how they've gotten better from the original Iron Man all the way up to Infinity War and what we've already seen through 
you know, the trailers for Ant-Man and Wasp. Yeah, agreed, agreed, for sure. And and one thing that uh, I, I really love is ha- the humor in all these movies. Like, oh, they, yeah. They, uh, they're not afraid to go there and do really stupid things and just make the audience laugh. Like, you can tell Josh Whedon made Avengers because it had his type of humor in it, for sure. Well, yeah, like, yeah, when you see the first two Avengers movies, you can, you can you know, if you're a Josh Whedon fan, you, you can tell that's his style. You know, for sure. He, that, he has a master of writing witty banter. I mean, look at Buffy the Vampire Slayer. True that. So, in Firefly. Yeah, both of those are really, really good series. Um, and then, uh, what really caught me off guard, just sticking in the Marvel Universe in general, was uh, Guardians of the Galaxy. Who saw that shit coming? Yeah, I know. Like, uh, like Guardians and uh, Ant Man were the two so far where I was, you know, and, and actually even Doctor Strange, if you bring that up. Like, going into them, I'm like, this looks awesome, but it's like, I don't know how well it's going to do. These characters aren't quite as well known. Doctor Strange is just kind of really weird and everything, but then you go see them, like, they're amazing. Right. I mean, I, I mean, I went with, you know, you know, the friend I went with to see the first two Guardians movies, like, I mean, he's not really into the comic book stuff at all, and he kind of begrudgingly went to the first one with me, because nobody else was available, and he ended up loving it so much, he just went, dude, we're seeing the sequel. <laughs> <laughs> well, and they were, and, and again, going with what I was talking about. They were completely unknown, yeah. Yeah, and they were, the humor in those were outstanding, yeah. like, they're basically comedies, like, action comedies. Yeah, I, when I described, like, how each each part of the MCU, like even individual movies in the same series. Like I've always told people, like, they, they have this thing you can't quite describe or really put your finger on, but you can tell it's part of the MCU because it just has that, that special something to it. But at the same time, they're all a completely different thing. When I talk about Guardians, I always describe it as a, you know, a action comedy space opera. <laughs> that's, that's not too far off. Yeah, it's pretty good. And, uh, yeah, like, when when like Winter Soldier would be uh, like a spy thriller, you know things like that. And then uh, Marvel finally getting the rights to Spider Man back. Oh, that was not entirely though. Sony still being you know departed with that stuff. Well, so, they they got him back that, enough. Yeah, hopefully after um, the Homecoming sequel, which supposedly takes place just minutes after in, in, uh, Avengers Four, so um, it'll be interesting to see. Uh, like the, the immediate aftermath of everything and exactly how much the MCU is going to be changed after everything that's been going on with Infinity War and whatever the sequel is actually going to be called. We still don't know what it, the final title is. Probably find out around the time it comes out on Blu-ray so enough people have had a chance to see it. Fair enough. Um, yeah. I like, it was, they got the Venom movie. They're still trying to go forward with that. Silver so, so a Black, uh, Black Cat movie. Yeah, um, a side note from the Marvel stuff, uh, Sony still owns enough of Spider-Man that they're trying to make their own Spider-Man universe, and yeah. that's that's just a whole other thing we're not even going to get into today. Yeah, that, you know, we're, yeah we're not going to get too into that, but it's just something to know. Um, we're not even 100% sure the new Venom movie coming out is even part of the MCU, even though that Fox executive said it is. Kevin, yeah, they said it's back and forth, but uh, I'm pretty sure it's not. I, yeah, Kevin Feige, you, you should, I I should look... Been, tried to say it is just to, you know, drum up more, because they know how it's the MCU is, so just even suggesting that it might be connected, you know, is, like, immediately going, oh my god, it's gonna be MCU, gotta go see it now. <laughs> even if it's gonna be a giant piece of shit. <laughs> you guys should see the interview. It's, it's fantastic. Uh, Kevin Feige actually, like, makes this like, priceless face when she says that, kind of like, uh, and he doesn't deny it. That's the worst part. He doesn't. He doesn't deny it at all. Yeah, Kevin Feige is uh, one of those guys behind the scenes who's a master of trying to keep things secret and kind of trolling just a look. Yeah, it was pretty fantastic because like now everybody doesn't know. You know, is it part of it? And then uh, with Venom, how can you have Venom without Spider Man? Like yeah, those two. Actually, um, a closer look at the trailer. Some people have. Act- they found he doesn't have the, the spider symbol on his chest. Okay. Which is just weird. That's an iconic part of this design. Right, and again, like I just said, you know, you can't have Venom without Spider-Man. Those two are like um, peanut butter and jelly. Like It's like Batman yeah, like and Batman the Joker. Joke. 
Yes. Yeah. See, you no, said. No, we just said it. Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, or like, like I mean, you knew like you just you know going back to the early MCU like you 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 knew like Cap was gonna have to go up against Red Skull, especially with like the World War Two like you know period piece set up for right. Avenger. You know, in like four, you knew he had to deal with Loki at least. Iron Man, you knew eventually he had to deal with the Mandarin, and we're still waiting for the real Mandarin. <laughs> yeah, that 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 trolling of uh, the Mandarin was just stupid. Like that actually kind of ruined the movie for me. Yeah, like I mean, it's still a good movie. I still love it. I mean, I I'm kind of in that minority that has not disliked or really hated any part of the MCU, I mean, even with the TV shows. I actually liked Inhumans. I liked Iron Fist. You know, I yeah, I Iron Man two and three, which are generally pretty down on that that's another aspect I, I wanted to talk about today too is since paul brought it up we're going to talk about like the marvel uh netflix shows like uh, jessica jones daredevil iron yeah. fist and luke cage now and punisher and, and punisher and yeah and the defenders that's right that's right um one thing i wanted to talk about and paul i don't know if you agree with me on this or not iron fist sucked it was horrible. It had a lot of problems. Like I said, I, I like Iron Fist. I like the Inhuman for what it was. But yeah, like I can also see a lot of why a lot of like most people didn't seem to like. Only Danny, the guy playing Danny Rand, like was kind of all over the place in Iron Fist. Although here's the funny thing: the two, those two shows are the two people generally tend to hate. The guy behind that ran those two shows, and thankfully it's a new different show for Iron Fist season two. They've already confirmed this. The guy's name is Scott Buck. Same guy was responsible for both shows. Both shows failed. You see the connection? Okay, yeah, I see your point. Yeah. Well, my biggest problem with Iron they also, Fist... They also rushed Iron Fist, which is why the fight scenes were so shitty compared well, it, to anything else. And, and that's another thing, like, just sticking with Iron Fist for a moment. Um, the, the fight scenes were really, really disappointing. Like, they had a chance to focus on the martial arts, which is what Iron Fist is all about. He's just punching and kicking and... And they, they screwed that up. And then the acting itself was just bad. Like, super, super bland. Like, soap opera quality. It's just like, this is garbage. And then you look at shows like Jessica Jones, where the, the acting is great. You look at shows like Daredevil, where the fight scenes are what could have happened in Luke Cage. Whoa. Huh? The audio was just, like, going crazy. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, the audio over here is fine. Anyways, what what I was saying, what I was uh, what I was trying to say is, if you look at what they already did before Luke Cage started, and then, I mean not Luke Cage, excuse me, Iron Fist started, they already had it there. They had the writing, they had the action, and it, I guess it must be what you were talking about. Like the same guy who made two critical failures had his hands in this, and that's the problem. Like they, if they would have kept what they already started with Jessica Jones and Daredevil, and combine those two things into Iron Fist, it would have been way better. Yeah. And, like, Defenders actually even proved that, um, yeah, on his own and just with his own series, like, Danny Rand as a character has not been that interesting. Once you got him with Luke Cage in the Defenders, like, holy crap, like, the chemistry was already there, and, like, I'm one of those people that says, like, okay, Instead of keeping Luke and Dan and Iron Fist in their own separate shows, and maybe even bring Jessica Jones into this if they really wanted to, like just combine them Heroes for Hire. Just combine them into one Heroes for Hire show, and then they can even spin that off with Misty Knight and Colleen Wing as the Daughters of the Dragon. Now, for those of you who don't know, Heroes for Hire was uh, a comic book series that was just specifically Luke Cage and um, Iron Fist. And those guys, like, in the Marvel, uh, just regular comic book universe, they're, they're super tight. They're best buddies. They do a lot of stuff together. And they even were, like, heroes for hire, just as the saying said. So yeah. they basically worked if they, you paid them. Um, but uh, I'm actually okay with the fact that they kept Luke Cage by himself. Because, like, Luke Cage to me is basically what Black Panther is. You know what I mean? Like, um, yeah, I like that. Well, well, what I mean by that That's is... That's kind of a funny thing, yeah, like... You look at Black Panther and Luke Cage, and even like going, you know, DC for quicks against Black Lightning. Like they've done a great job with those characters, and not just going like here's a black superhero going to be as stereotype as possible. They've done, a, they did a great job. Well, and in their particular worlds. And since you brought it up, you know, going as stereotypical as possible. That's what I was getting at. You know, it's just like there's not a lot of like strong uh, black heroes out there, and like I, I feel like if you would have 
partnered him with Luke Cage, it would have uh, dem- like kind of took away from what he could have been like to the people. You know what I mean? And all a little bit, yeah. Like for, like for a first for that first season's like yeah, I'm glad they did them separate and it just jump right through higher. Mm. But post Defenders, you know, like maybe like after their second seasons, like, like Luke Cage season two is supposed to be coming out sometime over the summer. Okay. Uh, I just still think it would be really cool because they have they have also confirmed Iron Fist does show up in Luke Cage season two, so we're getting okay. kind of like a little bit of Heroes for Hire okay. kind of hints uh, in season two of Luke. So it would be kind of cool if they just kind of merge them together. It gives them Agreed. you know a better chance to use these characters to their full potential without trying to stretch and go, hey, how can we like do another mm-hmm. season? Well, we'll just like bring in this no name villain and stretch this out because like, the thirteen episode thing. Like, Netflix has a weird, has a hard time keeping the story going. Like you just get to the, like about the halfway point, and then it goes into this weird thing where like you just kind of forget about the main plot and just do random shit, and it just kind of brings everything to a screeching halt. Yeah, well, and that's why like I like some of the Netflix uh, seasons are only eight episodes long. Yeah, Defenders was only eight, but. Uh, yeah, all the other ones have been 13 apiece. Like, both seasons of Daredevil, hmm. season one of uh, the other four shows, and like even that, I believe season two of Blue Cage is confirmed to be 13 episodes. And going from what we already mentioned, and since we mentioned it, Black Panther. Black Panther, wow! That movie yeah. that movie blew me away. That was fantastic. Just and, the world building of Wakanda in and of itself. Was agreed. Well, well, the thing that really struck me, and is stuck with me was like the character of Killmonger he they made him the villain but he didn't feel like a villain like he felt justified you know um yeah he he, he ha- saw his father killed in front of him by his uncle you know and he had a rightful claim to the throne and he'd just been through so much shit you know and he was trying to like protect his people as he viewed them yeah yeah which it kind of goes back to, you know, like I said, the lessons they learned after, like, each movie starting Iron Man going on is you look at, like, how good Killmonger was. Um, you look at how, you know, Loki's evolved and everything. And then compare that to, like, the Iron Monger in, like, the first Iron Man. Like, I mean, he was an okay villain, but, like, he was just a, your typical comic book villain. Like, yeah, he was. like, yeah, I'm, I'm going to be, you know, be an ass just because I'm an ass. You know? like, <laughs> right. You know, and of course, you also got to bring up like and one of the complaints we'll have with villains is they have a tendency, especially with Iron Man, like, hey, we gotta have to fight, we have to have the hero fight somebody who's exactly like them. That's that's the only complaint people seem to have about Killmonger. Is the final battle between him and T'Challa was, hey, we got the Black Panther, and then we have this like other Black Panther. I, I can yeah. see that, but at the same point, it it made sense because yeah, it, it made sense in that respect. But, like, yeah, Iron Man, he fought the Iron Longer, and then, like, they had Whiplash become a totally pathetic version of the Crimson Dynamo. Yeah, that was that was pretty horrible. You know, um, Ant-Man fought Yellow Jacket. And Yellow Jacket, if I'm not mistaken, was just another incarnation of Ant-Man. Didn't Hank, Hank Pym eventually yeah, become Yellow Jacket? In the comics, Jacket? Uh, Hank Pym uh, went from Ant-Man, Ant-Man to, I can't remember which one came first, but yeah, he spent some time as Yellow, as Yellow Jacket, where he was, uh, Total jackass. I mean, he was mean to everybody when he was Yellow Jacket. I think he was actually Yellow Jacket during this thing people bring up in the comics, where he actually, uh, whether it was once or whatever, but like he beat like, his wife all the time or something like that. Mm. Yeah, he did actually hit Wasp. Oh. He's also been known as Giant Man. And in more recent books, like, yeah, he does tend to stick with the Giant Man mantle, and Scott Lang is Ant Man in the books. Huh. So you do have both of them in the books as heroes. Interesting. Um, yeah. I'm actually really looking forward to Ant-Man and the Wasp. That looks like it's going to be a really fun yes. movie. Yeah, and they have actually a fun thing with Ant-Man and the Wasp that I've learned. Um, the villain of the movie is Ghost, who in the comics is generally male, but they've been on a gender swap because they thought it might be actually be a little more interesting to have a female villain. Okay. And, and just, just judging from what uh, I've seen, like I, Ghost is a character I don't know that much about. I mean... If, if anybody introduced in the last 20 years, I'm probably not that knowledgeable on. I gave up on a lot of Marvel books because, you know, once we got around 2000, you know, like, 
they just started killing everything I liked about them. The MCU has gotten me, more, you know, ripped back into like that obsessed with Marvel mentality I had back in the '90s, but uh, only with the movies. Like the comics, I'm still not super keen on. Yeah, back when we were growing up, because Paul and me have been friends since uh, high school, uh, he was the guy to go to if I had any sort of comic book questions. He, he's <laughs> like a living encyclopedia. <laughs> yeah, yeah, Marvel and uh, Nintendo, I'm the, <laughs> I'm the go-to guy. For sure, for sure. Um, just changing it up a bit, let's talk about uh, Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. for a second. Oh, yes. Hopefully... Hashtag renew agents of shield. <laughs> yeah, we we we, we got to get the get to get them one more season to like be that bridge, you know, to help show the aftermath of the new world and like prepping for the uh, Avengers four events. Like we got to get that one that one more season out there, even if it turns out to be the last one. Uh, well, and and going along with what you just said, like that's one thing that I've always loved about Shield is it really does bridge the gap. Like, everything that happens in the cinematic universe somehow, some way, affects S.H.I.E.L.D., and now you get to see it from a different perspective. Instead of seeing, like, this grand, huge expanse with the superheroes, you get to see, like, what normal people are dealing with having to deal with the uh, um, outcome of the Sokovia Accords, for instance. You know, that hit the Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. show, like, hard, and... uh, like when Thor 2 happens, they actually went to the place where Thor 2 happened and they were picking up the shit after all that stuff went yeah. down. Yeah, they, they cleaned up after uh, the events in the Dark World. Yeah, they, um, I mean, Winter Soldier affected it more than any other movie because, like, the whole Hydra being in S.H.I.E.L.D. thing, like, I mean, that changed up the show. You found out one of Coulson's team was actually S.H.I.E.L.D., was actually Hydra all along and stuff. Like, like that. the first half of season one, was a slow burn. People were saying, this is a terrible show. The show sucked. Why did they even bother with it? As soon as they hit that Winter Soldier tie-in, like, the show just, like, went from this is kind of okay, but not that good, to holy crap, this is, like, the coolest show ever. <laughs> <laughs> and it's only gotten better. I mean, we're in season five now. Like, they're going all out this season. I, I agreed, especially, with, like, with the 100th episode where they brought back, like, so many different villains from the past seasons and whatnot. And yeah, not just villains either. Like seeing Deathlock it was great. Cause, yeah, yeah, that's the other thing with Agents of Shield is that like a lot of interesting characters that haven't been in the movies yet have already appeared on the series. We had Deathlock, and you know, since season one, who's maybe not one of the most well known characters in the in the Marvel canon, but and it's a, you know, there's been multiple Deathlocks in the comics, but it's still a really cool cyborg character. You've got uh, Blizzard, who's one of Iron Man's main villains. Uh, Anybody old enough to remember the 90s Iron Man cartoon probably remembers who Blizzard is a little bit. And then, um... Blizzard and World Wind and all of them. The Gravitonium uh, villain? Dick Del- yeah, Graviton, which, Graviton. Uh, slight spoiler, fair warning. Um, this season of S.H.I.E.L.D., we finally got Graviton. Yeah, that was which, really cool. Uh, um, and it's, and it's not who it is in the comic. It's a, a really great, well-thought-out twist. And I am loving it. I can't wait to see you you know, where they go these uh, last two episodes of the season. But yeah, um, and then like Ghost Rider. They actually had that Ghost Rider cool. in the show. That was really cool. And and, yeah. and it was it's nice because like right around the time Marvel got their hands back on Ghost Rider from another company, instead of making a new movie, they brought him in the shield to keep him canon to the MCU now because it's just like we own him, but we don't want to make another movie, so here's this. And yeah. it, it, it even better, like they went with the Robin Gray as one, which I didn't know anything about. I didn't know there was a, new, a newer Ghost Rider that used a car instead of a motorcycle. But, like, they went with him. He was really good. The actor was great. And the cast is him. And during the storyline, they do give strong hints that John Blade, you know, the, the first you know, motorcycle Ghost Rider, right. actually exists in the MCU as well. Oh, yeah. The Good Samaritan? Yeah. I mean, you know that was John Blaze. Yeah, and, like... From last I heard, there were still talks of uh, uh, maybe doing like a Netflix Ghost Rider show because the way they set up the Defenders, you know, was pretty good. And a lot of people going, they need to follow this up with something similar to Midnight Suns. Now, what's and, Midnight Suns? Midnight Suns is super, like, kind of a supernatural Defenders sort of team. Like you got, you know, you Ghost Rider, you got Blade and his Night Stalkers. Um, I believe Moon Knight might have been part of it. Uh, 
it's going to feel werewolf by night that I think was part of it. Mm. And things, yeah, it's all about like the supernatural heroes kind of banding together against threats, you know, like like Mephisto, who's another huge villain that a lot of people who know the comics have been waiting to see in the MCU. So it's kind of like Justice League Dark. Yeah, that's that's another way to look at it if you want to just kind of compare it to because Justice League Dark is probably more well known than Midnight Suns. Midnight right. Suns was like a, just a sh- kind of a short lived thing in the nineties. That was bad. That, that was when like everything was like okay, how like gritty can we be? Like, now, now they're doing that with comic book movies, like at least DC is. <laughs> well, I actually saw this hilarious meme. Uh, it said, uh, wh- the reason I prefer Marvel movies over um, DC movies is DC movies are too dark. And he's just like, too dark? Have you seen the newest, like, Infinity War? And he's like, no, literally, too dark. And it shows, like, a super bright screen of two Marvel movies and, like, just a regular dark-ass screen from two DC movies. And I'm just like... I see what you did there. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that's true. I mean, I, I, I still only see, out of the DCEU, I've only seen Suicide Squad and Wonder Woman, and, like, yeah, they're like, the, they're like, the lighting is just so dark and drab and depressing to look at. Well, and Justice League, sorry to get off topic for a second, Justice League was crap. It was garbage. Yeah. I mean, and this isn't because... Yeah, just look at the trailers. Like, I, I have no interest in Man of Steel. I have no interest in Batman vs. Superman. I have no interest in Justice League. Well, and it's just like... Everything I've heard, like about the pacing and stuff, just kills it. it, it, it you know. Well, not only that, like I, I don't know if I told you about this or not, but the scenes with Superman, uh, the actor who played Superman, had a contract where he had to have a mustache. Yeah, I like the, and the mustache. And they had to CG out his mustache, and there were times where his lip, it, it looked like this when he talked. I'm not shitting you. Like his lip went into his fucking nose, and he's just like, "We have to, we have to save the people." You have to. There's <laughs> <laughs> why, like, kind of sticking going back to Marvel, but not, you know, kind of still away from the MCU. One of the first trailers for Deadpool 2, like, they showed Cable with, like, the, the green screen, like, thing on his arm. Right. Everything in Deadpool is kind of cracked, and he's like, come on, we can do better than that. What the hell is this? Just to poke fun at the force of the guys. If you so, haven't yeah. seen it yet, you need to see the new Celine Dion Deadpool thing. Oh, my God, it's I'm fantastic. I've been a little afraid to say I can't stand Celine Dion. No, it's it's good though. It's it's short. <laughs> it, it's 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 not annoying at all. It's actually really hilarious. Uh, I'll put a link to that in the description. <laughs> and that's actually one of the other things is you know because of the, the merger with uh, or buyout, have you want to get it with uh, the same box? Like yeah, that means within another couple of years we can start you know hearing about plans for. How and when we spent yes four and the X Men like other groups tied to them like Deadpool, you know like what's the future of Deadpool going to be? They, well, and I like how Disney already flat out said when and if the merger happens, they're still going to have their R rated line. They're going to be like, yeah. okay, regular MCU is for everybody, but the R rated like, line yeah. like Marvel Deadpool, R, yeah. yeah, Marvel yeah, R, yeah. yeah, which like a lot of people said they can just call it like Marvel Knights. I mean, because that was like the label they used. Um, late 90s, like, early 2000s, uh, for, like, the darker gritters that they called them, like, Marvel Knights, or, um, I think there was another name they had for some of the dark, Marvel Max was actually the other name, that's, that's what it was, and that's where, like, you found The Punisher and Jessica Jones, uh, I think Ghost Rider would actually had a book under that imprint, there was a Wolverine book under that imprint, where we got, like, the level of violence that people were hoping for, you know, for we could find the guy in Logan. <laughs> Logan was badass, see it. Yes. Yeah, yeah, now I know when it comes to the X-Men and the MCU, I do not envy you after it has to replace your Jackman. <laughs> Whoever has to take up the role of Wolverine and replace your Jackman is in a very awkward position. Yeah, because Hugh, ja- Hugh Jackman was the best and is the best like Wolverine. He's He's been constant. Like, every time Wolverine could show up in a movie, that was Hugh Jackman. Even if it was a cameo, that was yeah. Hugh Jackman. And he is the, the only... Uh, person within the X-Men films to play the same character in all the movies. Like everybody else, they've had like other actors playing those same characters. And some of them aren't even in every single movie. True, true. So it is it is just kind of an interesting thing that he's played Wolverine like I wanna say like well, at least a dozen times in the past almost twenty years. It's kind of crazy. Is, yeah, like Hugh Jackman, Robert Downey Jr. And, 
for Reno, I can actually say, are probably the three that have, uh, and Kevin Conroy, just kind of going to close that a little bit. They're the ones that have the longest streak of playing with one particular character. For, for all the viewers who don't know, uh, Kevin Conroy was the voice of Batman, Batman the Animated Series, and he was also the voice of Batman in the Justice League series. He's been Batman in a lot of things. I, I want to yeah. say almost everything, but not. And then Lou Ferrigno was the Incredible Hulk in the Incredible Hulk TV show. Uh, and he's also voiced the Incredible Hulk uh, on the 90s cartoon and uh, other various media. And he is the uh, he does actually do the voice for the Hulk in the MCU as well. I didn't even so, know that. Yep. <laughs> well, uh, we actually made it through this with zero Infinity War spoilers. But uh, looks about our time is up, so we're going to move on to the last segment where it's we wrap everything up and we leave it off to you guys to decide, you know, what you want the next topic to be or if you have any comments or questions, put those in the comments below and uh Paul's my best friend. I can get answers from him if you want them. And uh so uh final thoughts, Paul, MCU. Well, I'm just excited to see where they go. Like I mean, Amanda Wasp looks good. Everything I've seen and heard about Captain Marvel so far makes me excited for that. Like, obviously, Avengers 4 is going to be the end of an era. And then, like, on the TV side of things, we've got Cloak and Dagger starting, which looks very interesting. Now, that is considered an MCU, though, right? Yes, it is okay. officially MCU. Um, so is Runaways, which uh, should have its second season. I haven't heard any new information on that yet, but given that season one just kind of stops, you know, and they have confirmed that, yeah, we are getting a not only a second season, but it's going to actually get a few extra episodes than season one had. You know, we got those, you know, the Netflix side of things has been doing good. Um, yeah, the only the only thing like I would, I'm hoping for that we don't know anything about yet is when we can expect a, a full uh, idea of the timeline of the MCU because the TV, you know, like some of the TV shows, it's hard to figure out where they fit. Like the, the people wanted the Defenders and Infinity War, but it's like, but when do the, those shows even take place? Like if they're taking place concurrently, people think Daredevil's dead right now. So it wouldn't have made sense to have an Infinity War. True. So hopefully we'll get some answers there. <laughs> and my final thoughts on MCU is uh, Disney buying Marvel was possibly the best thing to ever happen to Marvel. Having Disney's money to back up the insane things they want to do with the Marvel movies have given them opportunities to just blow it out of the freaking water. And they have. And they've been phenomenal. And like Paul said, I am super stoked for the next Avengers because – since we did keep it spoiler free, I'm gonna keep it spoiler free. Damn that ending, <laughs> and yeah. um, just just how they they do branch out. You know, they they do TV shows, they do mini series, and it's all yeah. over the place, and everything's interconnected, and they keep that connectivity. You feel like it's all part of a bigger, greater thing. Yeah, and there's even gonna be a book coming soon too. That's gonna be expanding even further than just the movies and the TV. Because going to be, I don't know if it's an actual novel or a comic book graphic novel, but Thanos' backstory within the MCU is actually going to be claimed in a book coming out this year. So, we got that to look forward to, too. There you go. All right, guys. Well, thank you for joining me for another uh, Joel Modest podcast. Like I said, in the comments down below, uh, if you guys want to hear me talk about a specific topic, if you want more Paul, hopefully we can figure out in the next episode how I can record his video, too, so you don't just sit here listening to him and seeing me like, <laughs> so thanks again for joining us and i will see you guys in the next video Hadouces.